Hello, my friends of the psychedelic renaissance. It's Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian. And, as most of you already know, Timothy Leary was kind of full of shit. Now, while there are many examples to choose from, in this video, I'd like to focus on a conversation that Leary claims took place between himself and Aldous Huxley as he records in his autobiography, Flashbacks. For those of you that have a copy of his autobiography, well, one of his autobiographies, he really liked to write about himself a lot. I believe the clinical term for that is ego loss. Anyway, uh, if you have a copy of Flashbacks from 1983 and you'd like to read along, please turn to page 44 where Leary has Aldous Huxley saying to Leary, Your role is quite simple. Become a cheerleader for evolution. That's what I did and my grandfather before me. These brain drugs, mass-produced in the laboratories, will bring about vast changes in society. The obstacle to this evolution, Timothy, is the Bible. So Aldous Huxley never said those words. Here's how I know that. Mostly it comes down to that last line where Leary holds Huxley saying, the obstacle to this evolution, Timothy, is the Bible. Now, to the careful researcher, there are at least two reasons that we know that Aldous Huxley never said that. Now, the first thing that raises my skeptical alarm is the use of the term, the Bible. The thing is, Aldous Huxley had an intimate knowledge of both the Old Testament and the New Testament, and when discussing scriptures, he wouldn't use a vague term like the Bible, he would often cite chapter and verse. A couple of examples shall suffice. Let's take this letter here from uh, Aldous Huxley to Christopher Morley, where he writes, Huxley writes, I should say, there is even a lot to be said for sacred books. For the interpretation and algorizing of such works as Genesis or the Song of Songs, has evoked in the course of ages a great volume of important philosophical and psychological speculation. So you see, even though sometimes Huxley might use the term the Bible, he often accompanies it with specific sections, in this case, the Song of Songs and Genesis. Or this letter from Aldous Huxley to George S. Nevu, where Huxley asks, in the French version of the Old Testament, is it really, your vengeance is mine, which translates, the vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, of verse 35 of the 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy. Now, the truth is, Huxley's actually talking about Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 19, but that's not the point. The point is that he, when he's talking about scripture, he often cites chapter and verse. Now, that's all relatively minor. It's actually the second issue that leads me to believe that Leary totally made up this conversation. And that second issue is that in 1960, when Leary pretends this conversation took place, the church had no problems with LSD or mescaline at all. In fact, at this time, the late 50s, early 1960s, you actually had priests blessing people's LSD sessions. Our first example comes courtesy of Aldous Huxley's best friend, Gerald Hurd, who would often fly to Phoenix, Arizona to hold LSD sessions for Claire and Henry Luce. Now, the Luces had a preacher friend, a certain Father Joseph Murray, who not only would bless their sessions by making the sign of the cross over the LSD, he would often eat the LSD with them. There was also Father Edward Dowling, who was the sponsor of the founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, Bill Wilson. Now, while Alcoholics Anonymous wasn't exactly keen on LSD and mescaline being used to cure alcoholism, Father Edward Dowling certainly was. Hell, did you know that in Palo Alto, California in the late 1950s, there was actually a Bible study group that was using LSD to find deeper meaning in their scriptures? They were called the Sequoia Seminar. Check them out. There was also Father Brown, who in December 1957 wrote a letter to his congregation titled Introduction to the LSD Experience. You see, Father Brown had not only blessed several other LSD voyages for people, he had taken LSD several times himself, and he wanted his congregants to know that he was just fine with it. Quote, Each division of scientific knowledge has produced proof conclusive of the supreme being responsible for the perfection of order our scientific minds uncover. We therefore approach the study of psychedelics and their influence in the mind of man, anxious to discover whatever attributes they possess, respectfully evaluating their proper place in the divine economy. 
we humbly ask our Heavenly Mother, the Virgin Mary, help of all who call upon her to aid us to know and understand the true qualities of these psychedelics, according to God's laws, to use them for the benefit of mankind here and in eternity. For our last example, let's bring it full circle back to Aldous Huxley, who in January of 1959 wrote a letter to Father Thomas Merton praising the virtues of LSD. Now, to give you just an example of the timeline here, this, this letter that Huxley wrote took place a year prior to the made-up, in my opinion, conversation that Leary records he had with Aldous Huxley in 1960. Quote, one group now working on alcoholism in British Columbia, incidentally, is using lysergic acid within a religious, specifically Catholic, frame of reference and achieving remarkable results. The point of all of this is to say that in 1960, when Leary pretends this conversation took place with Huxley, the Catholic Church was not against psychedelics at all. And Huxley knew that, which is how we know that he never said that the Bible would get in the way of future psychedelic research. Now, in the late 1970s and early 1980s, when Leary was writing flashbacks, well, by that time, the Catholic Church had absolutely turned against psychedelics and future research. So what Leary did was simply take his situation in the late 1970s and early 1980s and anachronistically throw it onto the past and place it on Aldous Huxley's lips, I guess in a way to make it sound like Aldous Huxley agreed with Leary, which by the way, he did not, <laughs> did not. Uh, and that, just doing that, throwing modern ideas onto the past is a common thing that people who are not historians that nonetheless are trying to write history do quite often. You know, and all this actually reminds me of that trite cliche that history is written by the victors. No, accounts are written by the victors. History is written by historians. So just like the victor in this situation, Leary, wrote his account, it takes a historian, me, to say that he's full of shit. Well, my friends, that's all I have for you this time. And like always, I'd love to thank you for stopping by. Please share this video, subscribe to my page, and hit the little bell icon so that you're always notified when new content becomes available. Also, please give this video a thumbs up if you think that I'm correct and that there's no way that Aldous Huxley said what Leary has him saying. And give this video a thumbs down if you think that I got the story wrong. And until next time, I'm Tom Hatzis, your psychedelic historian, reminding you that you free your mind by using your brain. Peace.